Hello and welcome to Hive World Hands On for June the 30th. Uh, welcome back and uh, we have some really exciting stuff for you today. So let's just do a quick recap because we're pretty much at the pinnacle of the populations or should be at the pinnacle of the populations in the beehive for the season for those of you who are looking to produce a little honey. For those of you who have established a new colony this year this is the moment where the bees will be able to gather tremendous amounts of honey and resources to pack their hive full into two boxes to be able to overwinter successfully. And depending on the kind of July and August that we have, potentially produce some excess honey in uh, end of August, possibly into the first week of September. But uh, since we were here last time, we have already uh, prepared these bees for the honey flow and um, what we're going to speak to today is uh, a little bit about BC and the prairies. So leading up to this point, um, for BC, uh, continues to be cool and rainy for the large part. Um, certainly the, black, the blackberry flow which is underway has not been overly successful. Um, maybe some resources coming into the hives, but many beekeepers still feeding um, to make sure the bees remain viable and make sure they remain alive. Um, so cool weather has persisted certainly uh, and cool weather continued to persist through in Alberta and the prairies um, right up to the beginning of May uh, we had a bit of a weather break and now we've had you know some decent weather but we've also had a lot of rain which is obviously totally contrary compared with last year at this time when we were dealing with temperatures of plus 40 and the bees were suffering uh, and dying uh, unprecedentedly across the province. So certainly with the moisture, we're thankful compared with last year, but the moisture is being a little bit detrimental to the bees getting out and causing the bees to be home a little more at the moment than we would prefer. And I think that would be largely true across Alberta and Saskatchewan. Manitoba, we know with the unprecedented cold um, and the uh, weather systems they get in from the US, um, the summer flowers are significantly behind. Dandelion is just finishing. Uh, we've been done here for a good two weeks now, three weeks. Um, but the bees have packed a lot of resources away from the dandelions. Uh, for those of you who overwintered hives or got packaged bees earlier in the season, your bees would have done extremely well on the dandelion. There'll be a lot of cat brood from the dandelion. The hives are ready to pop over the next four to six weeks with a huge population of bees. Uh, right at that moment now, when the uh, summer flowers are just coming to begin, uh, just beginning to start to produce some resources for the bees to store away as surplus honey. Now, in our bee yard here, for the purposes of this video series and for the purposes of helping uh, beekeepers of all walks of life through, we've got four different hives at four different stages and producing uh, honey and bees in four different ways. And I'm going to speak to you to those today. Um, I don't quite know how much flexibility we're going to have to get too deep into the hives uh, just with how cranky the bees are and with the amount of bees that are flying and the amount of resources that are coming into the hive but we're going to give it a whirl and um, we're going to ask you to pop in questions we are going to call out a winner uh, for our uh, prize draw uh, today for the two frame extract the electric two frame uh, extractor I should say the electric extractor I'm sorry um, and uh, call out your questions into the chat we will try to answer them through the session and um, we'll try and give you some insights of what we've got going on here but for those of you who are interested in an auto flow uh, now is the time to have your auto flow and set your auto flow on the hive and I'm going to show you with our hive on the end how you would go about setting on an auto flow box what the, the um, hive world auto flow that collects the honey for you and then you can take it out of the back of the hive on tap. So in our first hive here you'll recall uh, if you remember back from our last video that this box this hive was in two boxes so it was a deep box here and a deep box here and this hive had done particularly well uh, through the season um, very very full of bees and uh, about a week ago 10 days ago we um, made a choice to use this hive to produce some comb honey now, when you produce comb honey, um, one of the methodologies that we use is that you find all of the 
brood in the hive, so eggs, larvae and cat brood, and you put that all into the lower box. The excess honey, that's going to be about 10 frames, um, you take out and you put four frames in a nuke box, you put the other six frames in another hive, which we put over here, and um, you find the queen, and the frame that the queen is on, you take out with the covering bees and you put her in the nuke box with four frames of honey. So we have the queen out um, in a nuke box with four frames of honey and bees, and she's actually over there. Um, and so this hive becomes queenless, packed with cat brood and packed with bees. And we do that on purpose because we put the bees into a state of panic with no queen, a very small cavity and a large honey super at the top here prepared ready with strips of wax to produce lovely comb honey. Now we've done this for a couple of reasons at this particular location is because we do have flowering canola about one kilometer away and we do have an abundance of summer flowers that have come out. Now despite the season's difficulties the summer flowers have come out in abundance so sweet clover, uh, white and pink clover, um, lots of the meadows blooming really well and the alfalfa is already blooming in a lot of places so despite the season and despite how difficult the bees have had it uh, nature has actually caught up to about where it should be in Alberta for June the 30th and that's pretty impressive um, in our commercial beekeeping operation we have honey boxes on the hives already and honey being stored away so it's uh, very unprecedented and it's quite extraordinary um, but we're going to take you through today we're going to take a look inside here and I'm going to show you what we've done with the frames to produce the comb honey. <laughs> All right, so in this box we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten brand new frames. And I'm going to very carefully take one out and I'm going to. Show you what we've done the bees. Not that happy. What we've got here is we've got a frame medium frame and we put in a very 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 small strip of wax at the very top and we can see that the bees are building the hexagons on the wax now ready to draw it out and um, bring it down and the bees will fill it down here it will it will go wider and wider and wider and finally they'll fill it to the edges and fill it to the edges they'll cap it over and we can harvest it I'll just take a look at some of the other frames here and see if there's a chance that we have any more production on any of the frames. And that'll give me an idea how things are doing. Now these bees aren't particularly happy because they're queenless. Now the reason we make them queenless is because when we pack so much bees into such a small area, they would automatically swarm. So as a swarm prevention method, as a swarm prevention method, they, uh, we move the bees into one box, pack them tight, put the comb honey above so there is no other option to do that. And we can also be confident that the queen is not going to lay um, in, the, in the comb honey. So down here is full of bees, but there is no excluder between the brood and the honey box because there is no queen and there won't be any queen for quite some time and by the time there is a queen she'll have plenty of room to lay downstairs and won't have any need to worry about coming up and laying in the comb honey super. So this number of bees working on the honey um, and as the season gets uh, more underway into July we're going to see a lot more production with the bees building down here. See this is a very narrow strip they built this down significantly more by nearly one inch but we're going to see them fill this out as the honey flow grows and the rain stops a little and um, we're going to be able to come back hopefully in two weeks and show you the progress the bees have made on the uh, on the comb honey 
So that's just a recap, is a, a big two-story hive, all the brood crammed into the bottom. Uh, most of the stored honey taken away. Uh, the queen put into a, with the frame that she was on of brood, put into a newt box with four frames of honey. She will develop and create a nice little colony for the fall. And in the meantime, these guys are producing a new queen downstairs um, uh, with, a, with, uh, with swarm cells. Uh, I'm not going to dig through that today because they are a little bit on edge, generally speaking, because of all the rain and the confinement. But you can see the uh, activity. You can see the bees hanging out the front here. Um, there's bees coming back with pollen. There's bees coming back with nectar. So we know the hive is filling up. We know things are going well. We just want these guys to um, fill up this box here of comb honey. All right, we move on to our next hive, which is a nucleus that we established in June. So from the nucleus, we established this in June. We put it inside. You know, you'll recall the video from uh, the beginning of June. And um, what we have in here is a second we've put the second box on now and um, the bottom was very full and what we've put in here is we've put the extra honey that we took out of um, I'm just gonna scrape this propolis off uh, we've taken that we put the extra honey in here that we took out of this second box when we condensed that hive down to 10 frames of just the brood and a, few, a little bit of stores so what we've got in here is, I'll just uh, show you the honey frames that we've put in here. These are a little cranky. But here's a honey frame that we took out of that other hive. And this will be large of dandelion honey in here. You can see how they're capping it now. And on this other side, you can see how they're cleaning it up and making it all nice and white and bright. This side also had um, a bunch of brood in it, which they've cleared out because it had died. And they're, they're um, repairing all of the comb, they're building it further out, and they're beginning to cap the honey over. And I can smell in here a lovely, bright, fresh honey smell, which is really, really good news. Now I'm just taking a look here to see if the queen is taking advantage of this um, additional space that we've got up here. So this particular queen is um, a Canada raised queen from 2022. And um, from what I can see, We've largely got honey being stored up here, but I'm hoping on this next frame, just because of the number of bees that are active, that we might find... Yes, and what we've got here is you've got the, the queen has um, begun to lay here and the bees are clearing it out nicely, ready for her. And we've got a lovely collection of um, honey and pollen stored over top of where the queen has begun to lay so just in the week here the bees have expanded significantly and the queen is beginning to take advantage of this uh, space and so we'll watch here now for about another two weeks we'll watch for these guys to increase in population and um, as they do so respond appropriately with a, a honey box bees hatching out there we'll, we'll uh, respond appropriately with a honey box and a queen excluder on top here with drawn frames so that these guys can produce some honey in the back end of July and going into August for the main alfalfa flow yeah and this again is full of honey so we know with a decent hive, there is certainly a very large quantity of honey coming into the hives. And I'm confident that the queen is not up here because I haven't seen her, so I can 
okay to drop this in the centre, which is a nice empty frame. All right, so that's our that's our nucleus that we established in June, doing great on uh, nearly 12 or 14 frames of bees, and um, with the honey that's coming in, certainly a lot being stored directly upstairs. All right, we're going to move on now to um, our hive here, which we established mm -hmm. from a package in April. Um, and I'm giving you an example of what happens when we put bees, uh, honey boxes onto bees that are not ready for them. And when we put, when we put honey boxes on bees that are not ready for them, or an extra box that our bees are not ready for, it's just dead space. So we set these on at the same time as we set on the, the box over here. And you can see that the bees are sort of playing around at the bottom here. Uh, but this is very, very, very full, indeed. Um, very full hive, uh, and putting on a box like this onto, onto bees like this is what I would say is asking for trouble. So this is like, for such a full hive, this is like a barrier up here. There's no place for them to go, really. Um, you can't really, I'm just gonna close it because they're not very happy. You can't really, uh, force them to go up because there's no comb to encourage them to go up and putting this on here actually is in a, we're in a danger of making them swarm because there's no more room for the bees and that's why in a situation where we're going to try and produce some comb honey where the bees are going to do all of that work we've got to make the bees stay and to make them stay we make the hive queenless temporarily so a great example of whether you're putting comb on drawn comb comb honey super whatever it is if we're putting the super on and the bees are not ready for it, or if there's too much undrawn, you can be fairly confident that you need to be cautious about the fact that you could cause your bees to swarm. So when we're putting um, when we're putting a super of foundation or comb honey above the bees, we can never use a queen excluder because again, the queen excluder is a, a, another barrier. But before we before we come back to this session, we will have put this box on over here because the bees will need it, hopefully. And we're going to put a queen excluder on here and we're going to put a box with drawn comb ready to, for the bees to store away hon excess honey. And uh, we won't have any problems. The bees won't swarm and um, they'll continue to be productive and everything will be, uh, everything will be great. So that's a package of bees that's got two full boxes, absolutely full, full box. We do have a comb honey super on top, but really great example where the bees are just not going up. They're not drawing the comb, the little starter strips down. Um, it's just a really good example of potentially pushing your bees to swarm instead of having them be productive and store the excess honey from the summer flow. Now, in our final hive here, this is a, this is a hive that we established um, from a nucleus in uh, late April, early May. And this has gone really, really well. And about a week ago when we put the comb honey super on, I noticed that unless we did something and gave them more space, we we're gonna have a problem. And so for the purposes of this video, I put on a third box full of drawn comb um, in anticipation of this session to see potentially what the bees will do. And I'm gonna take you inside the box and we're gonna take a look and see what the bees have done in 10 days in the third box. And we'll see if maybe even the queen has come up the queen has had not enough room, she may have even come up. But let's take a look. Now, um, you might not be able to see this, I don't know for sure, but in the in this box, we've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got nine frames loosely spaced in here in this box. And the reason we have nine is because when these bees fill this with honey, we want them to build the comb out past the edges of the frame. If they build the comb out past the edges of the frame, 
cutting off the comb with your uncapping knife is a lot easier and a lot more straightforward and a lot cleaner. So nine frames in the Honey Super is much, much more um, advantageous for extracting the honey later. So this is a frame closer to this end that doesn't really seem to have been touched by the bees. It has been cleaned nicely. But I want to take a look in here to see what's going on. There seems to be a lot more activity and I'm getting a real, I'm getting a real, real cross response here from the bees, as you can see, because I have no smoke. And the bees are not happy. They're storing honey away. And here we go. So this frame is totally full of honey. Completely full. In fact, it's completely full with honey. There is no place else for bees to put honey in that frame. Yep, the second frame is completely full. I'm going to have to quit this after this frame because the bees are furious. And then they're okay, so on this frame, they're just filling this out nicely. They're growing the cells. And then on this frame here, I've got about a half a frame of honey. So in less than, uh, in less than about a week, the bees have filled completely two frames full with honey. And that's from a nucleus that we established roughly at the beginning of May. So if you didn't establish a nucleus until uh, May or June, just imagine how much honey you're gonna be able to make through July and August so long as the weather stays like this and we get regular rain to keep the flowers secreting nectar. Now, this will give you an idea of the quantity of bees that it takes to be around you in order for you to produce honey. And it's a really important truth that in order to produce surplus honey that the beekeeper can take away, you need two things. You need surplus bees foraging that are surplus in addition to the needs of the colony growing in the bottom and the second box. Mm -hmm. So if we've got a mediocre number of bees and the honey flow comes on, bees say, no, there's no extra honey for you. We, have to, we need this for survival. Once the bees go past a critical point where even more of the force inside the hive can go out in the daytime to forage for nectar, more and more bees every day as the colony grows, more and more of the percentage can leave and go for nectar in the field. As more nectar comes in, there's no room to store it. And so we need two things. We need a surplus nectar flow. So flowers in the field that are producing nectar in addition to what the colony needs down below every day. Then we need extra bees, more than the colony needs to survive, to bring in the extra nectar that's in the field to go into the top box. So if you get honey in the top box, or if you get honey above your brood nest that you can take away this, this year, two things happened and coincided at the right point. Surplus bees and surplus nectar. Now, the willow flow and the dandelion flow are a great example of this. Those two flows typically are just enough for the bees for the bees that are available. As the bees grow through the willow flow, there's more bees to take advantage of the dandelion flow, and so nearly all of the dandelion flow comes into the hive, into the top two the bottom two boxes, and is consumed by the bees and used to grow the populations up through to the main honey flow. So it's very seldom, unless you have an extraordinarily large hive at the middle of May, to have surplus dandelions. The dandelion flow is so prolific, normally, that if you had a very large population of bees, you're gonna end up with them swarming. So it's very rare to be able to get dandelion honey. Um, but for the, for the bees, they love to get out and forage. And if they're foraging and there's nectar to forage for, they will get the forage. They'll bring it back to the hive, they'll store it away. And now we've got surplus honey in the third box 
from our nucleus that we established about the beginning of May. So we have a nucleus, we have a package of bees doing really well. It's about two weeks behind this guy. Uh, it was put in, in in April, it was very chilly. Uh, the bees got set back. We've got a nucleus that we established at the beginning of June, doing really well, expecting great things from this and some surplus honey. And we have our powerhouse, um, uh, we have our powerhouse here, uh, creating us some comb honey, which we'll show you the results in two weeks and we'll see how it's going. And uh, I always love the view of the bees now all getting back orientated after you've caused them total mayhem looking through their hive. So within a couple of hours, the bees will be back at it, um, pulling in the, the surplus nectar. Lots of activity today. And as you look at the sky here and you see the bees coming and going, it's, um, it's really, really good purposeful honey gathering activity. So don't be caught off, don't be caught off guard, folks. Make sure you've got surplus boxes. If you're establishing a hive for the first time and you're growing a box of comb and it's all foundation and the bees have not drawn the comb out yet, don't use an excluder because the bees will swarm and you'll lose your bees. And you won't get any surplus honey and you won't get any surplus work that the bees can do for you this summer. Keep pressing on with making sure that you're doing regular checks. Crack the boxes if you're in two boxes. Crack the first two boxes, take a look inside, see if there's a chance that you've got swarm cells. You can do this right here actually. So this is how you do a quick swarm check without being too evasive. You just go in and crack the two boxes and lift the boxes back and you can look inside and normally speaking if they were going to swarm you'd see swarm cells hanging down between the two boxes. We're good here. Entrance reduces, mouse guards, if your box, if you if you've got 10 frames of bees in the bottom box, take off your entrance reducers. Um, you want to have the maximum flow of bees as you can see now in a day you can't afford to have the bees crowding in a small entrance have the bees coming and going and um, really enjoy the show of uh, what the bees will produce for you here over the next um, eight weeks so june 30th we're looking at wrapping this up for the honey flow by the end of august looking for some decent weather some decent flying weather some decent canola alfalfa all the summer flowers now coming out along the road ditches um, difficult season beginning very very late very cool bees have been very difficult to come by um, but the bees we have been able to um, distribute out to customers um, again I think this is our seventh year of distributing bees to customers and uh, certainly some of the best bees we've ever distributed and we're really really happy about that difficulty with getting uh, packages into the country and um, we're hoping that might be resolved with some solutions from the US next year. I know the uh, Canadian, various Canadian associations are working on that. But uh, despite the difficulties, the weather um, on the prairie for sure, Alberta, Saskatchewan has really picked up and has brought in, uh, uh, brought in a decent uh, summer flow for us. The bees are behind, uh, gradually, uh, generally speaking, uh, gradually uh, picking up strength in the commercial world. And I think we can say now with some confidence that we're looking at between 40 and 60% up and down the province loss commercially and for our hobbyist friends. So um, difficult times for the beekeeping industry. Uh, we appreciate you sticking with us. And um, we're gonna answer the questions now if there have been any posted in the chat. All right, and our winner today um, for the uh, electric extractor, if you're on the uh, live stream, um, type in that you're on the live stream. Uh, Michelle Allery. Michelle Allery. Michelle Allery, if you're on the, if you're on the live stream, type in the chat that you're here and we will declare you as the winner for our two frame uh, electric extractor
All right, so Michelle has not responded to us. Um, Rachel Christensen. Okay, Rachel Christensen. If you're on the live chat, identify yourself. Uh, if you're on the live stream, identify yourself in the chat and you'll be our runner-up winner for the um, electric extractor. Okay, uh, not sure on the pronunciation here, so we apologize, but Nancy Cinnamon, if you're on the live uh, stream, type in the chat. If not, and you are watching this afterwards, either on Hive World Hands On, on the Hive World Academy, or, la or on YouTube, uh, and you hear your name called out, reach out to customer service at Hive World uh, by email, and we will. Um, fix you up with the prize. So we'd like to thank everybody for joining us today for Hive World Hands On. We look forward to seeing you on our next session, which I believe is July the 15th. And we'll talk to you about the progress of the honey flow and we'll start to anticipate some dates that we might tip up some honey to take honey away from the bees that are surplus and put back empty boxes. So thank you again and congratulations to our winners. Thank you for those who have joined us. Have a great Canada Day long weekend.